Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting game from the prestigious Mr. Dodgy Invitational 2.0. Uh, it's Nils Grandelius versus Anish Giri and it, uh, well, the game just features a very nice attack so I thought you guys might enjoy it and like I said there are so many Blitz games being played every day in this uh, wonderful tournament so do use hashtag suggestion at, uh, suggest a game that you, you enjoy. And uh, also I would just like to mention there is a very strong tournament today being played on Lee Chess. Uh, I will put a link to it in the description below. I might even stream it if I manage the time. Uh, it starts in two hours uh, from the time that I'm making this video. Uh, it will uh, feature uh, some very strong players including uh, even Sharic. Uh, um, uh, uh, he was the 2019 European Champion. He was the World Youth, cha youth Champion. He was the World Junior Champion. He's the uh, two times Croatian champion, so uh, you might get a chance to play against him if uh, if, if you guys have time, do join us. Uh, so, uh, first link in the description below. Now, getting back to the game, uh, uh, Nils Grandelius versus Anish Giri. Let's check it out. And also, uh, the second link, uh, if you haven't seen it, I will put uh, Sharic's game uh, against Magnus Carlsen that he played, I think it was in the 2014 Olympiad. Uh, so, do check that out as well. It's the one where I completely messed up uh, uh, my, uh, well, uh, I, I thought that uh, Croatia would win the, the football championship and then we didn't, but I made the video up front, so that's a bit weird. But if you completely ignore that, you know, the game is actually quite nice. So do check that out as well. Uh, will be the second link in the description below. Now, getting back to the game, uh, Grandelius with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have c5 by Anish. Of course, he goes for his uh, chessable opening. Uh, knight to f3, we have d6 and d4. Striking in the center, captures, captures, and of course, knight to f6. We have knight to c3 and a6 now going for the knight of Sicilian. We have bishop to c4. Uh, nicely developing the bishop. Uh, we have e6 uh, and now comes the bishop back to b3. Always a useful move as the queen might come to c7 then you're going to have problems. Also you don't want that bishop uh, to be in reach of the b5 or d5 pawn so uh, it's better to just put it on b3 right away. So b5 and now we have castles here. We have bishop to e7. Uh, you might think but why not uh, kick away this knight and then grab the e4 pawn. You could do this but uh, many a player has uh, lost the game this way for example if you do something like this and grab the pawn uh, then uh, you're gonna run into problems for example rook e1 attacks the knight and now well you can play d5 and it seems like you've uh, just grabbed the pawn and now you're completely winning uh, the problem is uh, let's say black goes white goes bishop to f4 how do you continue the game for example bishop to d6 uh, black, white can just easily play rook captures an e4 and now you're in uh, big trouble because if bishop captures bishop then you grab the bishop with the rook and of course if you capture here then you might run into knight captures on e6 and that's just terrible bishop captures you're going to play bishop captures on d6 and now the king is still in the center of the board uh, the queen nicely defends the bishop the bishop prevents the king from castling and this is a pretty bad position for black so one of the reasons why not uh, why maybe playing b4 in this position isn't so great there are positions where playing b4 is great this is not one of them so here bishop to e7 and now comes queen to f3 uh, again a uh, very nice developing move with the queen uh, in some lines there there are possibilities of a double attack here uh, but this again is not one of them so queen to b6 this has all been played before nothing new here uh, if you if you try this with e5 going after the knight and the rook just bishop to b7 the queen now nicely guards the b7 square so this is possible so bishop to e3 now you're threatening some very nasty discoveries as the queen is on b6 and giri moves it back to b7 uh, we have queen to g3 and here uh, Anish just castles king side. You don't really have to worry about the g7 pawn. This is not really a target. You could, uh, if you play something like b4, uh, white can never grab the g7 pawn because rook g8 now both the queen and the knight are under attack. So instead after this queen to g3 we have castles by Anish. Uh, and uh, Grandelius immediately jumps into the attack. So here, bishop to h6. Now threatening to checkmate Anish with queen captures and g7. Uh, but Anish just defends it. Knight to e8. We have rook f to e1. Now adding a defender here, preparing to bring the other rook to d1. Uh, that will complete your development. Uh, and then you can uh, decide what to do from then, uh, then on. And then uh, now comes b4. So attacking the knight here. Uh, and here, uh, interesting uh, fact is that this position has been reached before. And in both of those games, knight to d5 was played. And knight to d5 is the absolute strongest move here for white. And this is probably what Giri was prepared for. 
uh, even though it's uh, it's very hard to play this with black when white plays uh, knight to d5. For example, if white goes knight to d5, you can't really accept the knight because after, let's say, captures and captures, uh, the queen is under attack. Once the queen moves, you're going to lose the rook. And if you try defending the rook, then just bring the bishop back to e3. Now a lot of very nasty discoveries are coming. The knight can move, uh, the threat and checkmate. Uh, so anything is possible here. Uh, but the white would be winning. So what you would have to do after knight to d5 is just uh, something like king to h8. I make room for the for the rook on g8, but now let's say captures with uh, captures without check, but you have to recapture back uh, and the bishop to g5. And now again, it's a very uh, difficult position for black. You could play some like f6, but then just bishop goes back, and it's uh well you, you've ruined your position, and it's gonna be a better game for white. So. Uh, in any case, if you were wondering why what happens here. Uh, but Grandelius did not play knight to d5 here. Instead, he played knight to a4. This is not as potent as knight to d5, but it is a new move in the position. So already as a move 14, we have a completely new game. Uh, let's see how Anish responds to this. He starts by playing, not that, he starts by playing a5. And okay, uh, you uh, defend your your b4 phone, uh, pawn once again, and you can now use the a6 square for your pieces if needed. We have rook a to d1. Uh, Grandelius now has developed all of his pieces uh, and king to h8. Now you will be able to bring the rook to g8 to help out uh, with the defense of your king side. Uh, bishop to g5, now also uh, after this, uh, just capturing the bishop is also possible because the g pawn is no longer pinned. So bishop g5 and now knight to f6. And black really has a, a nice position here. It's very hard for white to, to continue attacking here. Uh, but Niels always finds a way. And there's a saying in chess, it's always easier to attack than to defend. Uh, here Niels starts with queen to h4. This frees up the third rank and now you can start uh, bringing those rooks to help out with the attack. Uh, we have knight to c6, Anish just continues development, uh, and now knight captures on c6. We have queen captures, and of course rook to d3. Now preparing to bring this rook into the attack, uh, and now uh, what do you play here? Well, uh, rook to h3 kind of is coming, so uh, Giri just uh, played e5, and he stopped this because the bishop now covers the h3 square, uh, but it is not enough. So uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find uh, the winning idea for Niels uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this incredible idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook Captures on D6. I'm, I'm only kidding. No, it's not. That would be crazy. The, the correct move is Rook to F3. And it's, uh, wow, I, I know you're thinking, but what does this move even do? Well, it adds a third attacker here to the F6 knight. And there's not uh, all that much you can do here. Uh, problem is, if you try something like bishop to e6 to maybe uh, maybe counter this light square bishop here, uh, the, the real threat is just rook captures on f6. That's the problem. And after everything is traded here, captures, captures, and captures, you will not be able to capture back because if you do, then queen captures with check, and now a second rook lift wins the game. Uh, rook to g3 is coming. There's no defense against that. Uh, you might try to prolong it a little bit with something like bishop to g4. We're just going to attack it. Let's say queen captures, defends it. Uh, but now h3 again just wins the game. There, there's no way for black to hold this. If you play h5, we're just going to play h captures. And now after captures, well... Uh, just queen g5 check for example king moves and now uh, rook captures attacks the queen also threatens checkmate with rook to h4 so uh, completely winning for white so it's uh, a really difficult position to defend for black uh, Anish finds the uh, the most resilient idea and that is rook to g8 so now what do you play here Problem is, if you continue with the same idea uh, that we've uh, discussed, for example, rook captures, bishop captures, and bishop captures, now black will be able to capture it because after queen captures, rook can block with rook to g7. Uh, that's the idea of rook to g8. And if you try a second rook lift uh, with the idea of doubling up here, it's not a problem. Just bishop moves, and then the other rook will also help out with the defense. So just rook g3, uh, black goes to rook to g8, and Anish can uh, defend this. Uh, however, 
after this uh, rook to g8 move, uh, of course, Grandelius played the strongest move possible. He played bishop captures on f7, now attacks the rook here. And now uh, Anish, uh, well, uh, there are some moves that prolong the game like rook to f8, but Anish grabbed the knight hoping for the best. But now, once again, uh, for the second time and the last time uh, in this video, uh, feel free to pause the uh, video and win this game for Niels uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations again on not doing anything weird like rook captures on f6, that was then. Uh, it's okay here now, it's just not as potent, uh, but for those of you who found the exact move, really congratulations, that move is bishop to g6, and it was in this position on move 22 that Anish Giri resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, mate is being threatened, we're just gonna eliminate the knight and deliver checkmate here. And there's really not all that much you can do. If you try h6, we're just gonna grab here on h6, and that's it. Captures, captures, knight blocks and queen captures on h7, or any any of the other lines. Uh, but after bishop to g6, there's just nothing for Anish to play here. So uh, while Niels won this uh, brilliant attacking game, uh, it was actually Anish who won the who won the match. I think six and a half to four and a half. So congratulations to Anish as well yeah, on this achievement. Uh, achievement. I just I went through all of the games. Not all of them were finished while I chose this one, uh, but I thought this one was nicest and that you guys would enjoy this one the most. So uh, I decided to show that one. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, do uh, suggest games using hashtag suggestions so I uh, I can spot them as it's very hard to go through all of them. I do go through most of them, but it's easier when you guys use, ha use hashtag suggestion. Uh, do join uh, the Leeches tournament, the first link in the description below. And if you uh, haven't seen the game Sharich versus Magnus, uh, the second link in the description below. It's an older video uh, for when my videos were still at, at only 30 frames per second. Uh, but, uh, you know, what What can we do? Uh, we will remake it at some point. Uh, but do check it out as well. Uh, so, yeah, uh, once again, uh, thank you all. Uh, I would like to thank uh, David, uh, Tony Moat Guitar, Jeffrey Waldron, Rohit Vishnu, and Richard Black for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this prestigious uh, tournament that is the Mr. Dodge Invitational 2.0. Checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.